Okay, folks. Uh, today, let's learn chapter seven. And uh, uh, this chapter has two folds. Uh, first half, second half. X number three, home number four. But, uh, you know, uh, not to that hard. So let's start. Uh, the title is uh, Simultaneous Equations with uh, Arrow Components. So the first half of this chapter is uh, we're going to discuss uh, endogenous issue. In other words, we're going to learn two-stage least square in panel data. As, uh, uh, as before, you would expect to see we're going to have fixed effect version and random effect version, right? So we're going to learn fixed effect version of two-stage least square and the random effect version of uh, two-stage least square. So, you know, that's very straightforward. Let's see. Uh, so this is our regression model. Y is a function of X uh, beta plus UIT. And so uh, the one-way error components model, we have uh, mu I plus VIT. And so it depends on how you treat mu I. Hence, we have C fixed effect version, random effect version. In other words, that uh, depends on depends on mu I is nice or not nice. So we call the mu-i correlated uh, with uh, xit or not, right? So we have uh, two versions. So let's review. If you want to do the fixed effect version, like before, first of all, we do a within transformation. Transform y into y tilde, uh, x into x tilde, uh, the v into v tilde. And so what happens to our alpha and mu i? They have been canceled out, right, by using the within transformation. So that that's why we don't have alpha anymore. We don't have a mu i anymore. So we have the within transformation. So recall, as we learned before, if the problem is called by mu i, then the within transformation already solved the, the mu problem because it's canceled out, right? So that's what we learned before. But this chapter, we're gonna learn the case. What if, what if V is also correlated with XIT? What if uh, V is also, you know, correlated with XIT? Of course, uh, from the within transformation, you can see V tilde after the within transformation, V tilde is uh, still there, right? So that within transformation can only cancel out mu i, but of course cannot cancel out VIT because VIT. Uh, VIT also varies by T so that uh, you cannot cancel it out, right? So uh, the within trans transformation can only solve the problem which caused by mu i term, but not caused by VIT term, right? So, so that's why if V, if mu i is not nice, we can cancel it out by using within transformation. But if V is also a troublemaker, V is also correlated with XIT, then we have to just like before, look for an instrument so that we run two stage least square, right? That's a story. So let's see. The fixed effect version, very simple. And so, uh, you know, after the within transformation, if V is also correlated with XIT, right? After the within transformation, V tilde still correlated with X tilde, so that we need to look for an instrument so that we run two stage least square, right? So just like before, we need an instrument. Suppose the instrument variable we find is called a Z, Z variable, so that the fixed effect version of two stately square is, we run a two stately square regression, Y tilde over X tilde by using instrument Z tilde, by using instrument Z tilde. What's Z tilde? Z tilde, just like Y tilde, X tilde, Z tilde will be, you know, we will simply apply the within transformation to Z as well, right? So by definition, Z tilde will be Z I T minus Z I bar, right? So that's simply the fixed effect version of two stage least square. Beforewards, in a, uh, in a cross section of the case, a two stage least square will be, for example, something like run a two stage square Y over X by using instrument Z, right? Now, very similarly, we run two stately square by Y tilde over X tilde using instruments Z tilde, right? That's simply the, the fixed effect version of two stately square. 
and see that uh, it doesn't have much to say. We already introduced the, uh, the version. In a second, I'll show you the corresponding computer commands. That's all, right? So that's that's the introduction of the fixed effect version. Very simple. How about the random effect version? Random effect version, first of all, recall our uh, random effect, uh, if, you know, before words, ignore endogenous, uh, in, ignores endogenous problem caused by V. Before words, our random effect estimator is uh, simply a GLS estimator. We do a transformation we call the Y star over X star and correspondingly U star, right? And so in this uh, U star, because originally U is a summation mu I plus VIT, right? So our random effect estimator, uh, we do not cancel out mu I. As we treat UIT altogether, but we apply our transformation to overall UIT, right? After the star transformation, after hopefully, you know, U star is IID again, right? So the in detail, the star transformation is this. For example, Y star, Y star is Y minus theta times uh, YI bar. Right. And so similarly, X star and U star, they always uh, look uh, very similar. That's the star transformation. That's so that if you run a regression, Y star over X star has a corresponding coefficient of beta will be our random effect estimator. This is something we learned in chapter two, right? In chapter two, you can, re you know, go back to chapter two to review this stuff. And at that time, still remember, we discussed some detail. You know, theta is determined by the value of uh, sigma square mu, sigma square v, right? The variance of uh, mu i term and the variance of uh, vit term. And so at the time, we introduced some technique detail. For example, if t is really large, and so it depends on how many years, if you have many, many years, right? If t is really large, this ratio and so because t is at a, divided by, you know, at the bottom. So a number divided by t, if t goes to infinity, a constant sigma square mu divided by infinity, then this ratio basically is zero, right? So the theta basically reduced to one, right? So if your t is really, really large, at the time in chapter two, we discussed that, uh, you know, theta basically reduced to one, so that if you plug in one right here, our star transformation basically reduced to within transformation, right? So that we conclude when, when our T is really, really large, then random effect basically reduced to, reduces to the fixed effect estimator, right? That's what we discussed before. Question. Yeah, T is uh, how many years? Number of years. So that's what we discussed before, right? And also, you know, you can also say if sigma square mu is a zero, same thing, right? And so second term also reduced to zero, right? It means our mu i, suppose there's no mu i term at all. So it's uh, the variance of mu i, of course, is zero, right? So in that case, fix, no matter you do fixed effect estimator, random effect estimator, you get exactly the same thing, right? So that's what we learned before. That's the star transformation. So now we are talking about two stage least square uh, in case of random effect. So Based on this uh, star transformation, again, we're going to do two stage least square because uh, because U star contains a V star, right? It contains a VIT term. VIT, since we, we didn't, you, we can never cancel it out. VIT is correlated to X, right? After star transformation, you know, X and U, the X star and the U star, they two are still correlated, right? So that we still need the instrument so that we run two stage list square, right? So very naturally, just like before, recall fixed effect version two stage square is a re regression. Y tilde or X tilde by using instrument Z tilde, right? Right here is the random effect version. Very naturally, we're gonna conclude probably the random effect version uh, of two stage square will be a two slit square regression, Y star over X star by using instrument Z star, right? That simply is the random effect version. Uh, it is correct. It is random effect version, but uh, not done yet. If you do so, if you do so, this is a first uh, choice. This is called uh, G two slit square, generalized two slit square, which is, uh, you know, we use a Z star as instrument. We use a Z star as instrument. Let's go back to it right here. 
if you run a two stage least square regression, y star over x star by using in general, you can use a transformed z as instrument. It transforms z, for example, if you use a z star as instruments, then that's the that's the first option that is so called generalized two stage least square, right? So it 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 is a you know the random effect version of two stage least square. And by for example, if you do state by default, state are gonna give you this option and say you know. But right here, I, you know, I didn't directly write down Z tilde, but in general, I put a sentence, use transform the Z. In other words, besides Z star, we have one more option. Besides Z star, we have one more option for the, for the random effect version. The second option is, you know, instead of a Z star, you can simply use a Z tilde and Z bar, Z i bar altogether. And so supply both of them to computer and so less computer use a, they two combination, you know, as a, a list of instrument. So let's take a closer look. What's Z star and what's Z tilde, uh, Z bar? Recall, recall the star transformation. Z star by definition is Z minus theta times uh, Z i bar, right? So, Basically, basically, Z star could be could be expressed as a combination of a Z tilde and a Z bar. For example, if you plug in one right here, if you plug in one right here, so you know it will be simply reduced to Z tilde, right? In other words, in other words, you know Z star could be also rewritten into a summation. For example, you know. Z tilde and plug in uh, simply write on right here. So since uh, since the definition is uh, Z i t minus theta Z i bar, right? So I can rearrange a little bit into the it minus z i bar. The board really bad. And so, and so plus plus the i bar and the minus theta times the i bar. And so minus the bar and plus the i bar and then minus theta. So they two basically plus one minus one and said. So, they can cancel each other. So the original theta goes to here, right? The reason why I do this little trick is uh, Z minus the bar. This is our Z tilde, right? So Z tilde, Z i bar, Z i bar. So basically what I'm trying to say is, you know, this is not required, but I'm trying to say is a Z star could be expressed as a linear summation of Z, Z tilde and the Z i bar, right? Z tilde and the Z bar transformation. And so that's why, that's why the second option, second option is uh, do not directly give uh, Z star as uh, the instrument. So instead, we give both of those uh, Z tilde and uh, uh, Z bar as options. Let computer to decide the corresponding, you know, the weights, right? So that's why these two options uh, you know, in essence, they are kind of similar because because the first option directly use a Z star. Second option simply supply both of them to to the computer. Let computer to determine. You know, is that how large the corresponding weights between between tilde transformation and a bar transformation, right? Within transformation and uh, uh, between transformation, what's the perfect weight? What's the best weight between the two? So. If you directly use uh, Z star as instrument, basically you already determine the, the weights between tilde and a bar, right? But the second option is uh, we do not specify the, the, the weights. Instead, we leave option, give the freedom to computer, let computer to determine, you know, which instruments, uh, you know, the, has, has bigger weights, which instrument has smaller weights, so on and so forth. That's the idea. Basically, we give more freedom to the computer. So, State a default usually goes to the first option, directly use a Z, Z star. But 
The second option is proposed by Bhattabhaji, 1981. And in the literature, this is called EC two state least square. EC stands for error components because tilde and bar they are kind of components of those, uh, you know, <laughs> of total. So the second option is called EC two state square. Uh, do you guys want to guess which option oh, between the two? Which one is better? Yep, <laughs> but Bataji's option it's it's better. Better in the sense, you know, the second option, better Bataji, EC two state square will be more efficient. And so the state of default usually use the first one, but it's not efficient. Second option, body Bataji's version will be more efficient. In other words, second option will be give you, give us even smaller standard errors. <laughs> That's the idea. So that I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, and, you know, uh, from a computer output, actually, better Bataji's option will be, will be, will be much, much better. That's basically the idea. So the theory, let me repeat, talking about the fixed effect version of two steady square. That's simple. We have only one option, which is a, uh, Y is tilde over X tilde by using instrument Z tilde, right? That's the fixed effect version. But talking about random effect version, we have two options. The first option is by default, you run a two state square Y star over X star by using instrument Z star, right? That's the state of default. That's the state of default. And so the literature called G, G stands for generalized to stage least square. But this, the, the state of default is not the best option. And it's better Bataji's version, you know, the EC two state square, that's even better. And so better Bataji's option is uh, instead of uh, Z star, we give Z tilde and Z bar, give both of them to, to the computer. Let computer to decide what's the best ways between the two, right? And, and so, by doing so, you know, by doing so, at at least we, we you know, Betty's version is the same as a star transformation, either the same or could be even better, right? Hence, uh, hence, uh, Bataji and Lee, 1992, first of all, proved that these two options called asymptotically the same, asymptotically the same when simple size goes to infinity. And so, but later on, Bataji and uh, the famous econometrician Liu, <laughs> 2009, it's me, <laughs> we proved that uh, Betty's version, EC2 square, is always more efficient than the first option. And in other words, especially in fine and simple, especially when your sample size is not that large. Depends on N and T, right? If uh, if not, both of them really, really large goes to infinity. Actually, in fine and simple, Betty's version will be even, you know, will be better. Betty's version will be either either the same or better than, than the state of default. Of course, uh, you know, when I when I took Betty's course, I learned uh, the this paper from Betty. Betty and Lee, 1992 papers, they proved that they are asymptotically the same. But in a second, I'll show you. Actually, by running state result, I find out that uh, obviously Betty's estimator performs much better than the state of default. So at that time, when I sit in, in his class, I kind of get confused. The theory said the two, the two options are the same. But why the baddest version actually is much better than the state of default. So I sit down and derive a little bit. Uh, and so I, I proved that actually, you know, the baddest version, talk about the variance beta hat, is always smaller or at least uh, the same as the state of default and the option, right? So I showed to, to Betty and uh, of course, Betty also work on it. And so we two together wrote down our result. Of course, Betty is happy to see such a result because we proved his estimator is better, right? So, uh, so let me show you, uh, let me show you the computer results and then I'll show you uh, Bataji and Liu, this paper. Uh, I'll directly use uh, the PDF version right here to, to show you the uh, computer codes. So uh, by using a data set, by using a data set, we set what's our I and what's our T. 
uh, county and year. County is our I, you know, year is T. Has the beforeers the fixed effect regression? Fixed effect regression. This is our older stuff. X T reg Y X so on so forth and comma F E. Right here, I include I dot here. In other words, I try to do a two way model because I try to replicate the previous paper. But before previously, previously, you know, originally this is in this paper, 1994 paper. So that first of all, I try to replicate their paper, right? So in their original paper, they include year dummy, try to do a two way model. So I include I dot here, try to replicate their result. And so, so far, we ignored the endogenous issue in VIT, right? So we got the fixed effect estimator and the stored in, into FE. Uh, I omitted the result right here because uh, we, uh, we are already, already pretty familiar with this. And uh, similarly, I do the random effect version, XT reg, comma, comma, RE. I also include I dot year, year dummy, right? I save into, uh, you know, Called it, call it RE, right? Say, and similarly, we can compare them by using Hausman test to see if they are the same, right? So all these details are there. You know, I omitted because we are pretty familiar with this stuff. Now let's see how to do the IV version, how to do the two state v square version. And the commands command is XT IV reg. Before is it's XT REG, right? Now, if you want to do two state square regression, the command is XT IV rec. Of course, IV stands for instrument variable, right? Instrument variable regression, right? So that's the computer command XT IV rec. And everything very similar, uh, same as before, we have comma FE, comma RE. We have fixed effect version, random effect version, right? How to specify instrument? In my regression, I have uh, two endogenous variable. I have two endogenous variable. And so my Y is uh, the first variable right here. I'm gonna explain what it is uh, in detail in a second. The, uh, I have uh, X1, X2. The first two X variables, so they are endogenous, so that we need two instruments, right? So my instrument number one, instrument number two, they are my instrument variables. And everything afterwards, they are exogenous so that they are nice. They, they don't need instrument or you can call, they can instrument for themselves, right? So only, only the first two variables, they are endogenous variables so that we have, we have two endogenous, endogenous variables so that we look for two instrument variables, right? So the talking about computer commands, we pull to the two right here. And so that's the format. We use a parenthesis, parenthesis to include them and specify they too are endogenous verbal and they too are their corresponding instrument. Uh, usually, usually we don't have that many endogenous variables. So for example, suppose you have only one, suppose you have only one endogenous variable. So correspondingly, you only need uh, one instrument, right? So the format will be use a parenthesis, put X1 equals to Z1, right? And afterwards, X2, X3, X4, X so on, so on, so forth. That's basically the format. That's basically a format. Uh, I'll go back to to explain these variables, what they are in a second. Uh, so that's the fixed effect version of a two-stage least square. Random effect version, very similar. Replace FE by RE, so that we get a random effect version two-stage square, right? Let me show you, let me show you the, and so talk about random effect version so that I XT IV reg and comma RE so that we got to the random effect version. By default, it is uh, the G to stately square, right? By default is a G, in a second, let me finish at this one. So by default, it will be the, the G to stately square, you know, we mentioned just now. And so what if you want to do the bad Batagis version? You have to further specify this. Besides RE, further specify, I want to use the EC2 daily square version. 
In other words, this is a Buddy Bataji's version, right? So as I told you, this is better. This is even better. I'll show you, you know, I'll compare the two in a second for you so that I'll show you with the EC23 square, this option, it will be even better. But let's check out the computer result. If you specify EC23 square, the results are right here. It says, uh, you know, and so on and so forth, we got the result. And uh, everything very similar. In other words, uh, for example, if you want to use Hausman test to compare fixed effect version versus random effect version, just like before, you can still do that. For example, for example, say, for example, you can you can use a Hausman test to compare F E two three square versus R E random, you know, two three square. For example, F E is uh, you know no confusion. We have only one option, right? Suppose, suppose you saved the state of default, the G to slave square into RE to slave square. For example, let, let, let's go back right here. Right here. And so uh, I saved the state of default, comma RE into, into, I call it, I call it RE to stately square, right? So that we can compare fixed effect version versus random effect version by using Hausman test to see Hausman test always uh, compare, you know, mu i is nice or not nice, right? So that uh, let's check out Hausman test. Hausman test right here, try to compare FE to stately square, RE to stately square. And uh, their difference is zero or not, so that we try to conclude mu i term nice or not nice, right? And uh, similarly, you can also compare the fixed effect version versus EC to stately square. EC to stately square is a better Bataji's version, right? So let me show you EC to stately square in my previous code. In my previous code, I saved it right here. I run XTIV rec, comma, RE, EC, 2, 3, square. I save this result into, into, into EC, 2, 3, square, so that you can compare that one. So let me directly show you the computer commands so that uh, right here, right here. The fixed effect version, fixed effect version 2, 3, square, no confusion. Then let me make it bigger. And XT, IV rec, comma, FE, I saved in into FE, two stage list square, right? The random effect version, random effect version, by default, if you specify XT, IV rec, comma, RE, by default, this is a state of default. This is the so-called G, 2, 3, square, right? I, I call it RE, 2, 3, square. And the uh, Badi Bataji's version, if you besides RE, if you further specify, I want the Badi's version of random effect. So that specify RE, EC23 square, right? This is, this is an, the, another option of RE, another option of uh, random effect version. So by specify that, we got Badi's uh, estimator. So call it EC23 square. So talking about Hausman test, since we have two versions of a uh, random effect uh, two three square, right? So that you can use uh, the first version compare with a fixed effect version. Use a second version compare with a uh, fixed effect two three square, right? So that compare the two. And so, uh, and so, uh, uh, usually they might, you know, you expect they to hopefully give you the same conclusion. What if uh, they give you different result? Then of course we trust the Betty's version better. Betty's EC two three square, as I told you, is more efficient, right? Give us a smaller standard error, right? So that so that if they two give you different results, then we we trust the second one. We trust the result based on Betty Bataji version. We trust the EC two stately square, right? Questions. Oh, I was going to ask about the IV. Uh -huh. um, you explain again the code. So the first variable corresponds to um, the set. The first one. Oh, I see your question. These are my x one, x two, z one, z two. 
Hence, so right here, you don't have to exactly say something like uh, Z1 corresponding to X1, Z2 corresponding to X. You don't have to. You can just uh, space, you know, supply both of them to computer. This is my X1 and X2. This is my Z1 and Z2. Hence, computer, you know, <laughs> gonna, gonna, you know, uh, hence, uh, the, what computer do is, uh, for example, the computer directly uses Z1, Z2 for X1, X2 together. That's basically code. So again, this is a kind of complicated situation. In practice, usually we don't have uh, that many endogenous X. Usually, you know, we have only because because in practice to find instrument is kind of hard, right? To find one good instrument is already hard. If you have two endogenous variable, you need to look for two in the instrument, right? So as usual, f find one instrument is already hard. So to find two good instruments is, is too hard, right? That's why in practice, you don't see papers with uh, so many, you know, endogenous problem <laughs> in variables, right? But let me explain what are these variables. Uh, simultaneous. This is a paper I was talking about. And so Betty and I, we proved that his estimator is better. His estimator is better. So let me let me show you those variables, what they are, so on and so forth. Okay. Let's skip this proof. But anyway, the, the theorem we try to prove is uh, the, the G to the square and the EC to the square. If you compare their variances, and so the first one, the variance minus the second one is always positive. In other words, the first one, the variance is always larger than Betty's estimator, right? The default, the variance is always larger, is always bigger. That's why the first one minus second one is always positive. Since it's a matrix, so we call it a positive semi-definite matrix. Uh, anyway, in short, the first one, the state of default the variance is always bigger than Betty's estimator, the variance of Betty's estimator, right? That's basically the, 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 the theorem try to say. So, so in other words, the second one, the variance is, is smaller, right? We proved that one. So, uh, application, let me show you the start. So the regression is right here. Original paper. Conwell and the uh, Trumbull 1994 run the regression, try to study uh, prime rate in North Carolina. So their why is a crime rate. Why is crime rate? Right hand side of variable, he put a bunch of variables right here. For example, let's, in particular, let's see, uh, especially this guy log of uh uh should be should be number of um uh, number of uh uh policemen number of policemen per capita and so and so why number of policemen you know amount of uh, policemen is endogenous and so first of all we would expect if we have more policemen it's supposed to help reduce uh, the crime rate, right? That's the job of cops, right? But on the other hand, I would argue, you know, why we need uh, that many <laughs> policemen? <laughs> Probably because because the crime rate is so high, so that we we need hire a lot of uh, police, right? <laughs> so, for example, you know, um, a couple of years ago, I uh, uh, I in a conference, I ran to one of my friends. At that time, my friend, uh, at that time, he was in uh, Temple University. Uh, uh, if you know Temple University in, uh, in Philadelphia, right? At that time, I, we chatted a little bit. He told me, you know, talk about the safety uh, in, in, in that city, Philadelphia, in Philly. So I asked him, how about the safety on campus? He told me, uh, it's pretty good because on campus, you know, quite close to the Temple University, we have a really big police station. 
as you know, according to my friend, that's probably maybe maybe the largest or may, largest PlayStation. I forgot either in. In the state, or it could be largest one in U.S. I forgot, but anyway, there's a big, big uh, PlayStation, you know, close to campus, right? So he argued, he told me it's quite safe because a large uh, PlayStation. But when I heard this kind of story, I said, wait a second, <laughs> why they said such a big PlayStation over there, right? <laughs> it's a signal, maybe, <laughs> maybe because there's a lot of crime over there. That's why they said a large PlayStation, right? So a large PlayStation, does it mean safe or unsafe, right? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> right? So... <laughs> So that's why, you know, similarly in this paper, they try to argue on one hand, number of policemen, they're supposed to reduce crimes, right? But on the other hand, you know, why you expect to see, see such a, you know, a lot of police? Probably because the crime rate is so high. So that's, that's why, that's why they, they hide a lot of place in that area, right? So. <laughs> That's why they argue this. They, we have that kind of endogenous problem, right? So, so what shall we do? We need to find an instrument so that we can run two stage least the square, right? In original paper, uh, Kong, uh, 1984, the, their original paper, uh, Cornwell and the Chong Pell, the instrument they suggest is, uh, you know, as we saw just now, we have two indigenous variables, two instruments, right? One of the instruments they suggest is a uh, type of uh, crime, type of crime. Some crimes, uh, for example, say you need to perform face to face. For example, if you rob someone, right? If you are, uh, steal something, so on and so forth, uh, other things uh, such as a rape crime, such as a uh, robbery crime, so on and so forth. You have to commit face-to-face. -face. But some other crimes, uh, you don't have to. For example, when, when nobody at home, you can, you know, uh, break the house, uh, steal something, right? <laughs> break a car window, steal something, right? So on and so forth. Depends on the type of those crimes. Some of them, you need, you have to commit face-to-face. -face. Some of them, you don't have to. So they use the portion, the fraction of this kind of a face-to-face -face crime, the percentage as an instrument, because they argue the the percentage of this kind of face-to-face -face crime uh, will be will be related to number of uh, policemen, but uh, doesn't affect uh, the total crime and <laughs> total amount of crime. That's the uh, argument in their paper. And so, our job is not trying to say their instrument good or bad, but based on their instrument, let's compare fixed effect version, random effect version, especially, especially when we compare the two version, two options of a random uh, RE to the square, right? We have state a default G to the square, the first one, G to the square. And baddest version, EC to three square, right? So compare they two, which one is better? And so let's see. So we replicate by using their data set. We replicate their original results. So this is first column is data default. Second column is a baddest, uh, you know, estimator, EC to three square, right? For example, let's see. Talking about betas, the coefficient, they're almost the same. No matter you use a state of default or use baddies estimators, the coefficient, for example, state of default to the coefficient right here is negative 0.414. Baddies estimator negative 0.413, almost the same, right? No big difference. But let's check out their standard error. The number inside the parentheses will be standard error. The state of default is a 0 0.22. That is estimator standard error is a 0 0.097, right? And it's about 0 0.1, right? 0 0.1. Standard default is a 0 0.2. That is the estimator smaller than 0 0.1, right? And smaller than half of those are result. And if you look look at further look at, for example, second number, state of default 0 0.13. That is estimator 0 0.05, right? If you continue, you know, to so on and so forth. That is estimator, you know, 
always better than the state of default, actually much, much smaller than the state of default. That's why, you know, when I saw, when I, when I took Betty's course, when I replicated these results, I, at that moment, I got confused. Betty's estimator looks obviously better. But why, you know, Beth, Patachi, and Lee, they showed that they, they are equivalent. They are the same. So, I, you know, I sit, sit down and try to derive a little bit. I figured it out. It's uh, asymptotically, if both n and t goes to infinity, then they two are the same. But in fine and simple, when n and t not that huge, then, you know, Betty's estimator must be better much better, at least the same, but, you know, either the same or even better, right? So what do we learn right here? If you want to do fixed effect version, and say, so, you know, the state of command, no option, only one option, right? You know, XT IV rec comma FE, right? That's the only option. But if you want to do the random effect version, as our lesson is uh, don't use a state of default. Right. <laughs> Don't use a state of default. Use Betty's as the EC to the square, you know, estimator, right? Betty's estimator is, is always better, right? So, uh, that's just like before, as I told you, you know, <laughs> state of default very often is not the best option. Right. So, <laughs> such as in this case, uh, probably beforewards, uh, state of guys, they didn't know this. So when they program everything, they didn't know that uh, Betty's estimator is better. So they they just uh, chose the more intuitive estimator than the by using the Z star as instrument. They probably uh, they thought that's more intuitive, right? This uh, since no big difference. Just use a Z Z star as a the default. But later on, you know, our paper we proved Betty's estimator is is better. It's always better, right? So probably it's too late to change their state of default. But uh, our, our lesson is that don't use a default. Always use a bad is EC to stage list the square, right? And so that's simply the, that's simply the, uh, the two stage uh, list the square, what we learned from right here. Uh, that's the first half. First half of the chapter, very simple, right? And so let me show you the homework number three. Homework number three is uh, uh, this is uh, probably the, the data set we saw before. We used it before, right? NLS, NLS data set. And so uh, either DTA version or CSV version so that, so that you can take advantage of previous homework. You can modify based on that one, right? So before, since we already run all, you know, the, the fixed effect estimator, random effect estimator, right? So now for this uh, homework number three, you can modify based on this so that you're going to run the IV version, right? So let's check out. Part A is run a FE, fixed effect version, two stage list square. Log weight over age, age square, uh, SMSA. This is a dummy variable for a uh, metropolitan area. Uh, 10 years. So before, I believe, previously, we, we run the exactly the same regression, but uh, we ignore the endogenous problem, right? So now we, we need to run, uh, Fixed effect version of uh, by using instruments uh, uh, union and the south union and the south. We treat tenure. We treat tenure to be the endogenous variable. Uh, now we 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 suggest that two instruments. In other words, we have only one x but two z's, right? So in your case, the state of commands will be something like uh, right here. And so, uh, where is it? For example, talking about fixed effect, as, as so the computer commands will be XT IV reg, your Y is log wage, and uh, your X, X1, X2, X3, right? X1, X2, they are exogenous. So that computer commands will be log wage, space, age, age square, and um, SMSA, right? Now, 
afterwards our our endogenous variable is tenure, right? So that put a parenthesis, put a parenthesis inside the parenthesis, and so you write tenure equals to as to the right of equal sign, put two instruments right there, right? Equals to union space south and end of a parenthesis, right? That's the format of uh, computer codes. So basically, basically, you know. Basically, the order doesn't matter. For example, for example, if you put this chunk of codes to to anywhere to to the end of the list of variables, it should be fine. To the very beginning, it should be fine. So, so the order doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. So wherever you know. So in your case, log x t i v reg log h age age square metropolitan area ten and then parentheses inside the parentheses it's. Tenure equals to uh, union space south, right? That's the computer code. Don't forget the comma. You don't have to put i dot here because right here we only need to do a one way model. In my case, I put i dot here because I try to replicate the original 1994 paper. The original paper used a two way model, right? For our homework, you don't have to. You don't have to put the i dot here and say, so, just ignore this part. Ignore I dot here. Just use a one-way model. You don't have to put your dummy. So that's part A, the fixed effect version. Part B, part C. Part B just run a random effect version. Use the state default G to stage list square, which corresponded to this part, right? <laughs> corresponding to this part. And so, you know, X T I V rec, comma R E. Right, gonna give you the state of default g two three square, and finally, run uh, another word in re two three square. We we want the Betty Batadi's version e c two three square. Then in that case, in that case corresponding to here x t i v reg comma r e. Don't forget e c two stage list square. Right. So basically, a b c just corresponding to these three. Three parts. Our homework, uh, our homework ask perform a Hausman test to compare Fe to slate square and the EC to slate square, right? Run the Hausman test. So, so which corresponding to here, right? <laughs> which corresponding to here? The our homework you you don't have to compare, you don't have to compare G to slate square versus Fe to slate square because. Because even you know the result since uh, since uh, you know g two three square is not that efficient, right? No matter reject now fail to reject now, we don't trust the result that much. That's why our homework only requires based on Betty's estimator e c two three square perform such a Hausman test, right? So our computer, you know, our computer homework basically only corresponding to this part. Compare f e two three square. And EC to square, right? And uh, don't forget to write down H now, H one, uh, your p value, your conclusion, so that shall we use uh, the FE to square or shall we use EC to square, right? Don't forget to write down those uh, those words, and so it it will be easier just to write some comments in your codes. Write down, for example, put a star H now is something. And another line star h1 something right and another one like star and put uh, this is my p value my conclusion i reject now or i fail to reject now and i choose uh, which estimator shall we use right so on so first and so you don't have to write an essay just uh, briefly write down <laughs> reject now fail to reject now so that i use a uh i, I use a first one i use a second one <laughs> right so so that's the first uh, computer homework any questions so far any questions so far? That's the first half of uh, of the chapter. Very simple, right? So the um, let's continue. Uh, you know, let's uh, probably do. Do you guys want a break or finish everything altogether? Continue. Okay, <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> All right, the first half, very simple. So we already finished the first half.
The second half in that chapter is called the Hausman Taylor estimator. Uh, frankly speaking, to me, uh, if I were Betty, I don't want to put this topic in chapter in this chapter. I would directly put in chapter two because to me, the Hausman Taylor estimator is the extension of uh, fixed effect or random effect estimators. So let me explain those in details. So now we are consider our regression model, but uh, with a new variable zi. So yit beforeers our model is so yit is a function of uh, xit and plus mu i plus vit, right? That's our old model. But now we want to include more variable zi into our uh, variable. In other words, some of our right hand side variables they only depends on i. They only depends on what i. They, they don't change over time. For example, suppose your y is wage. My xit could be, say, uh, working experience, right? Could be, say, uh, what else? I, I, uh, uh, maybe uh, I'll give you more examples of variables in a second. But most of variables is usually they varies by i. You were also vary by t, right? Varies by individual, also also varies over over time, right? Such as your working experience. But some variables only varies by i, but doesn't change over t. I, for example, suppose i is individual, t is time, right? Some variables they only varies by individual, but doesn't change over time. For example your gender, right? Male, female. Last year, I'm male. This year, I'm still male, right? I would say, I say it's probably most people, right? The gender doesn't change over time, right? Similarly, for example, race, right? Black or white, so on, so on, so forth. Last year, I'm white. This year, I'm still white, right? Last year, I'm Asian. This year, I'm still Asian, right? So on, so forth. You know, last year, I'm black. This year, I'm still black, right? Most people, the black, white, the race doesn't change over time, right? except your Michael Jackson, right? The color changes might change from black and white. I'm a big fan of Michael Jackson, so sometimes I joke about him. But uh, most people, usually your your race, gender, so on so forth, uh, you know, they don't change, right? But the question is, uh, let's see, if we run the regression, I'm going to show you the problem in a second. The fixed effect estimator, or within estimator, we cannot get the coefficient of these zi variables. Let me show you why. For example, say, let's recall the within transformation. Within transformation is based on between transformation, right? So remember, we got those uh, yi bar. So we calculate the average over time. By the way, this is a typo, should it be, you know, divided by t, right? We pointed out before, right? They said uh, previously we had the same table. So we take average over time so that we get yi bar, right? For example, say, talk about a wage. Suppose in my data set, I have wage for each person. I have, say, 1991, 92, 93, and 2000, right? So that I calculate the average wage over, over time, right? So that I get uh, yi bar. So left-hand side, this is a y bar average over time. After calculate average over time, so it doesn't change over time anymore. So only varies by i, right? Right hand side, talk about x. We got x i bar, right? How about z i variables? How about z i variables? Z i variable, as we mentioned just now, you know, they only varies by i, but doesn't change over time, right? So if you want to calculate the average of over time, basically itself, for example, let's say the gender dummy variable, you know, either zero or one, right? So for example, for me, if you, if you calculate the gender dummy for me, right? It will be over time, it's one, 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 one right? So if you calculate the average of these, these variables, then of course, still, still same thing is, it's one, right? Still, you know, basically the same zi variable. So that's why the after do the average, the between transformation, it's still zi itself, right? <laughs> and similarly, mu i, the average still mu i, vit, 
average of VI bar, right? What, another way to explain the transformation is that C, beforewards, beforewards, between transformation, after taking between transformations, average mu i is still mu i, right? So that's why the average z i is still z i, right? The difference between z i and mu i, z i is something we observe, such as your gender, your race, so on so forth, right? Mu i will be something we do not observe, such as a nice or not nice, uh, aggressive or not, smart or not. Patient or not, so on so forth, right? So, but anyway, so their only difference will be, you know, either observed variable or unobserved variable, right? But uh, uh, since we're talking about the person, so that uh, they are the same in the sense they don't change over time, right? That's why taking average and some mu i still mu i, average z i still z i. That's basically the intuition, right? Now we do the within transformation, basically equation four minus equation five, so that we got our tilde transformation, right? Y minus Y bar, we got Y tilde. Alpha minus alpha canceled out, so there's no alpha anymore, right? Beta X minus beta X I bar, so we got our X tilde, right? Let me scroll up a little bit. Zi, Zi, they are the same so that they canceled out, right? In my equation six, there's no Zi any, anymore. Similarly, mu i, mu i, they canceled out. We have no mu i anymore, right? V minus V i bar, we have a V tilde, right? So this is our within transformation. So talking about this within transformation, if you run the regression, y tilde over x tilde, you can get beta hat fixed effect. So the beta hat we call the fixed effect estimator, or you can call it within estimator, right? Same thing. But right here from equation number six, you can see very easily that we only have beta. We only have beta in this re equation, right? We don't have gamma, the coefficient z anymore. Z has been canceled out. In other words, in other words, the fixed effect estimator cannot tell us the coefficient of z, right? For example, suppose z is a uh, male, female, the gender dummy, right? Actually, in practice, people really care about the coefficient of a male, female dummy because they care about if the boss pay male, female the same, right? If the, if the coefficient of a gender dummy is, is non-zero, then we have the evidence the boss treat male, female differently, right? That's the evidence of a gender wage discrimination, right? That's why in labor economics, people really care about the coefficient of a gender dummy. But right here, right here, our equation right here says, unfortunately, our fixed effect regression cannot give us the coefficient of gender dummy gender variables, right? No matter dummy or dummy or not, not an issue. But the the issue is that. Uh, Talk about those zi variable as long as it doesn't change over time. The fixed effect cannot give us its coefficient, right? That's the problem of a fixed effect estimator. That's the problem of fixed effect estimator. How about random effect estimator? Random effect estimator is a recall. Recall random effect estimator. I didn't, you know, wrote it down. I didn't. I didn't write it down, but. Random effect will be do a star transformation. Hence, left hand side will be y star, right hand side x star, z star, and so they two all together u star, right? So random effect doesn't cancel out mu i, so that doesn't cancel out z i neither, right? So random effect gonna give us gonna give us the coefficient of z i variables. So so that's the difference between fixed effect random effect. Random effect gonna give us the coefficient of a uh, gender, right? <laughs> and so, but recall, previously, based on our discussion, and so fixed effect is always correct, which is safe, right? Random effect may not be safe, may not be correct. Random effect, in order to make it correct, we need one more assumption. Right? We need the assumption mu i is nice, right? So that we have to we have to pass Hausman test 
to make sure mu i is really nice so that we we can use a random effect estimator, right? So that's why in practice, when you when you run into this kind of situation, when you really want the coefficient of uh, say a, a female a female dummy, right? So hence you have two options: either use a fixed effect estimator or random effect estimator. Random effect estimator gives us an answer, but may not be correct, right? Fixed effect is correct, but unfortunately, it doesn't give us the coefficient of z, right? So that's the trade-off. So what do we want? Then probably you just, uh, uh, what you can do is, first of all, you, you probably want to pray, please, please let me pass the Hausman test so that uh, <laughs> so that I can use the random effect estimator, right? So <laughs> probably you're going <laughs> to pray like this. Let me show you an application. And so... In my in my application, I run a regression x t reg log wage. Right hand side, I have a bunch of uh, variables right here. OCC is your occupation, uh, South area or not, uh, metropolitan or, or not, industry, working experience, working experience square. How many weeks uh, do you work? Uh, marital status, in other words, married or not. Uni membership, uh, female dummy, black dummy, a year's education. Right here, the very last three, these are ZI variables. For example, female or not, it doesn't change over time, right? Uh, black or not, it doesn't change over time, right? Years of education, in my sample, you know, it also, it doesn't change over time. For example, in your sample, talk about people like me, you know, my years, how many years of education do I have? Last year, this year, no change, right? Because I, I already graduated. I already entered the job market, right? Once you go to go to work, and, so, and my years of education, you know, it doesn't change anymore, right? So that's why, for example, in my sample, these three variables they are my ZI variable, and everything everything else these are my xit, right? So let's check out. First of all, random effect estimator, of course, xt reg, comma, re. That's my random effect estimator. So that you can see, I got those coefficients right right here, and so on and so forth, right? We're going to go back to, to check out their detail in a second. But by the way, female dummy is negative. It means a female, their wage is lower, right? Similarly, Black dummy, their coefficient also negative. It means a black workers, their wage is uh, is lower than non-black. And education coefficient is positive. It means uh, when you have more years of education, of course, your wage will be higher, right? Those uh, those coefficient that, that's the meaning. And uh, let's check out fixed effect. I run xt xt reg everything. I put re everything right here, comma, FE. I want computer to give me fixed effect estimator. Let's check out. Fixed effect, first of all, computer says zero, zero, they are omitted. Why they're omitted? Because they are my ZI variables, right? <laughs> they has been canceled out because of the within transformation, the tilde transformation, right? When I cancel out mu I, I also canceled out ZI variables. That's why computer says these three variables has been omitted because they has been canceled out, right? So computer doesn't give me, fixed effect doesn't give me those coefficients right here, right? So, so far I get a fixed effect, random effect. Fixed effect doesn't give me an answer. Random effect, it does give me an answer, right? At this moment, probably my hope is, uh, please let me pass a Hausman test, right? So that I can use a random effect, right? That's my hope. So let's let's do the Hausman test. My computer calls, I've already saved my RE. I've already saved my FE so that I use a Hausman test command to compare the two, right? Let's see. Let's directly jump to the P value. Hausman value is a 5,000 something, really, really large. P value 0 0.0000, basically zero. This P value less than 0 
right? As always, if you p-value less than 0.05, our conclusion is we reject h now, right? We reject now. What's our h now? H now is always a nice, simple case. In this case, the H now of Hausman test is a fixed effect, random effect. They are basically the same, right? Or the difference is zero. We reject now means no, they're different, right? Their difference is non-zero, so that they're different. If they're different, it means it must be the case one of them is correct. The other one is is wrong, right? Still remember which one is correct? Fixed effect is correct. Random effect is wrong. Unfortunately, it's wrong, right? So in this case, see, that's the dilemma, right? We really hope to use a random effect because random effect reports everything. But unfortunately, random effect didn't pass Hausman test. It's wrong, right? It gives us an answer, but it's a wrong answer, right? Fixed effect is correct, but unfortunately, fixed effect doesn't give us the coefficient zi variables, right? So that's the problem we are facing, right? So we have to use a fixed effect estimator, but in, in this case, fixed effect that doesn't give us a coefficient of uh, zi variables, right? So uh, if, you, if we only stop at chapter two, then probably, you know, uh, we are hopeless. We we only you know we we got a stack over there, right? So now in in this chapter, I'm gonna show you a new solution. The so new solution is called Hausman Taylor estimator because a solution is proposed by Hausman and Taylor. They two together. If I remember correctly, Taylor is Hausman student, so that they two together propose a solution. So let me. Let me show you what the Hausman Taylor estimator is. How do they solve the problem? Let's talk about the theory. The theory is uh, first of all, if you take a closer look, this is our within transformation. This is our within transformation. From within transformation, we can always get a beta hat, not a problem, right? With the fixed effect estimator, fixed effect estimator can always give us answer for beta, not a problem, right? We have solution for beta. So that go back to equation number five. We can get an answer for beta, right? So what we're going to do is let's move beta xi bar to the left hand side. Let's move beta xi bar to the left hand side so that let's denote something called di, di is y minus beta x i bar. Simply move beta x i bar to the left hand side so that the difference, let's call it a d. So basically d equals to everything else. d equals alpha plus a gamma z plus mu i plus a z i bar, right? That's the equation, you know, we can, I'm gonna show you so that we got such an equation. Again, the only trick is we move beta x i bar to the left hand side so call it di, right? Call it di. So, so we got this equation. D is a function of z. Uh, of course, we can calculate d very easily because uh, see, we know we can get the solution for beta hat, right? From from fixed effect estimator, we can calculate beta hat, not a problem. So that we can calculate di term, right? So. For equation number seven, because we really want to know the coefficient of z, right? We really want to know the coefficient z, for example, the coefficient of a gender, the coefficient of a race, coefficient of education, right? So people tend to say, how about let's run a regression d on z so that we can get the coefficient gamma, right? We can get the coefficient of z variables, right? Almost correct, almost correct. Almost uh, means uh, you're, we are on the right track, but we cannot do a orderless regression. Instead, we have to do two slit square. Why we cannot do orderless regression? Because our z and the z, uh, z and v, z and v, <laughs> this sounds kind of similar. Z i term and the v i t term, they are correlated, right? Why? Because that's probably the reason why we fail to pass Hausman test, 
right? <laughs> right? Before words, before words, we require x not correlated with this mu, right? Since now we have x and the z, right? So our our assumption is a mu has nothing to do with x and the z, right? So so in our case. Since, for example, just now, when we see the Hausman test, we fail to pass Hausman test, right? It means probably, probably our mu i and the z i, they are related. So, so our, uh, uh, sorry, I, I mentioned the wrong term. I, I shouldn't say v term. It should be our mu i term. Sorry about that. It should be our mu i and the z, they are related. Mu i and the z, they are related because, because that's probably the reason why we fail to pass Hausman test. Hausman test is trying to tell us if mu i is nice or not nice, right? Mu i is uh, is correlated with the right hand side variable or not, right? Just now, since we we fail to pass Hausman test, right? It means probably our mu i it is correlated with with those z variables, right? At least the sum of those z i variables, right? So that's why. We cannot run the Euler-less regression because z and mu, z and mu, they are correlated. Sorry about the wrong term. It's not a v term, not a v bar. It's a z and the mu, z and the mu, they are correlated. That's why. That's probably the reason why we fail to pass Hausman test, right? So, in this case, we cannot run the Euler-less regression, but we can do a two-stage least square regression. We draw the two state least square regression D over Z by using some instruments so that we solve the problem. We can get our coefficient Z. We can get the coefficient gamma term right here, right? So again, we need instruments. That's the job, right? Uh, the first of all, the bad news is uh, we have to find instruments, right? That's, that's a bad news. But on the other hand, the good news is uh, we don't have to look for an instrument from outside. We can simply within the system, within our x, z variables, let's, let's take a closer look at our x and z variables. And so we don't, we don't need everything to be nice. We don't need uh, all of our x and z to be exogenous. As long as part of them are 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 nice part of the xi variables i uh, sorry xit variables part of the z variables are nice so that we have a hope we have a solution that's basically the idea how do we find instruments from inside the system let me formally show you the idea introduce some terminology so as as we mentioned just now since we fail to pass Hausman test then then it means a mu i is correlated with x and the z term, right? At least part of some of those x and the z terms, they're correlated to mu i, right? Our hope is only half of them, um, it, it doesn't have to be exactly 50%, but some of them, some of x, they're nice. Some of x, not nice. Some of the z, nice. Some of the z, not nice, right? So that let's divide x and also Z in two groups. And it's an exogenous variable group and endogenous variable group. And so let's introduce the terminology. For example, let's say, talking about Z variables, let's divide in two groups. The nice group, we call it exogenous group, let's label it as a Z1, Z1 variable. And so Z1, for example, might contain more than one variable. But anyway, if they are nice, if they are EXO, exogenous, let's call it a Z1 group. Whenever we put a one, and so it means that they are nice variables, exogenous variables. So Z1 variable group is exogenous. So that Z1 variables, you don't have to look for instrument because they are exogenous, right? Z2 variables, they are endogenous. Endogenous variables, they are problematic so that you, you have to find instrument for, for them, right? So that depends on how many Z1, how many Z2, so that we, we don't have to look for a lot of uh, instruments. We only, we only have to find instrument for Z2 variables because only Z2, they are endogenous.
right? As only Z2, they are endogenous. Z1, they are nice, they are exogenous, so that they can, you don't have to look for instrument for them. In other words, Z1, they can be instrument for themselves, right? Z1, they could be instrument for themselves. We have to find some instrument for, for Z2 variables, right? That, so that we don't have to find a lot to reduce the amount of instruments. Similarly, let's divide X also into two groups. The first group, X1 group, again, we never put label one right here. It means they are nice exogenous variables. Exogenous means so they have nothing to do with some mu i, right? So X1, they are exogenous group. X2, they are endogenous variables, right? Right here, recall, recall, in total, Z has two parts. Z1, again, we don't have to look for instruments for Z1. We only need to look for instrument for Z2, right? So how do we find instrument for, for Z2? We can simply use X1, the nice exogenous X, X1 group as instruments for Z2. Let me repeat. We need find instrument for, for Z2, endogenous Z2 group variables, right? How do we find the uh, instrument? Besides the Z, we also have X, right? We can simply use the nice X variables, we call it X1 variables, to be instruments, right? So X1 could be used use instrument for Z2 variables. That simply is the idea of a Hausman Taylor. So the so the let me show you right here. Uh, let me write uh, uh, right here. Uh, our Z, our Z, we have two groups. We have we have Z one and also Z two, right? So. Z1, they are, they, are, uh, they are nice, so that you don't have to look for instrument for them. Only troublemaker is uh, Z2 variables, right? So we only need to find instrument for Z2. So how do we find instrument for Z2? Very simple. Very simple. For Z1, for Z1, they can instrument for themselves. So Z1 instrument for themselves. What kind of instrument for Z2 variables? We can simply use X1 as instrument. So that, uh, uh, let me show. So these are our instruments. Instruments contains a Z1 and a X1. Z1 instrument for themselves, right? X1 instrument for Z2, the problem troublemaker, the endogenous variables right here, right? So that's why in total, our instruments will be Z1 and X1. And so they are all, they're, you know, a combination of our one variables, Z1, X1. Whenever you put a number one, it means they are nice exogenous variables, right? So that's why we use Z1, X1 as instruments, because in total, our variables, so they are Z1, Z2. Z1 instrument for themselves, X1 instrument for Z2 variables, right? So, so, so Hausman Taylor estimator will be run the two stage least square regression D over Z. D over Z, uh, again, Z contains Z1 and Z2, right? But a uh, two stately square regression, D over Z, by using instruments, a combination of uh, X1 and Z1, by using instrument uh, X1 and Z1. Again, let me repeat. Hausman taylor estimator will be running a two stately square regression, D over Z, by using instruments X1, Z1. That's simply the idea, so that we got the coefficient of uh, gamma. Gamma is a coefficient Z variable, right? So, okay. So let me 
Let me remove. Okay. Auto remove. Okay. So, Hausman Taylor estimator of gamma is a two stage least square regression of D over Z by using instrument Z1, X1. Again, whenever you put a one over there, it means they are nice exogenous variables. And so in practice, uh, we use the fixed effect estimator to replace the true beta, right? So that we get a D hat. Because originally, D is, an, D is based on the true beta. We never know. So we replace true beta by beta hat fixed effect estimator, right? So that's the procedure Hausman Taylor estimator trying to. Do. So that's the detail of um, procedures of Hausman Taylor. But nowadays, of course, we have uh, computer uh, data. In data, you don't have to do this uh, step by step. You don't have to stage number one, calculate uh, those uh, fixed effects. Stage number two, run to slate square. <laughs> you don't have to. Simply use a command, give an option so that the computer is going to calculate everything for us, right? Let me show you. Let's continue with the uh, example. We already showed the random effect, fixed effect, Holtzman test, so that we got a stack over there, right? We cannot use a random effect, but a fixed effect doesn't give an answer, right? So Holtzman Taylor estimator, the computer command is XT. Of course, XT stands for panel data. XT H Taylor. H Taylor. Taylor, of course, uh, is uh, the person's uh, last name, right? H <laughs> stands for Hausman. <laughs> so state uh, always give full credits to the second author. <laughs> the Hausman only get an H out of there, H Taylor. <laughs> uh, state uh, kind of kind of interesting. <laughs> state uh, like second author better, right? <laughs> H Taylor. <laughs> so X T H Taylor. And it's right here. Afterwards, we get all those uh, variables, just like before. Why? x1, x2, x3, so all those x variables. And the comma, after comma, specify what's your endogenous variable. Specify what's your endogenous variable. In other words, what's your x2 and also z2 variables right there. So uh, we try to replicate the, the, the original paper in Hausman taylor So they, put, they treat working experience, occupation, industry, uh, union and education to be endogenous. So they put right here. Why, why they argue, for example, let's take a closer look. For example, among these three, among these three Z variables, Hosman Taylor in their paper, they, they treat education to be Z, uh, Z2, the bad guy, right? They treat, uh, Z1, uh, female black to be Z1 nice variables, right? Why they treat it this way? Their argument is something like, uh, so why we got the endogenous problem right there? The log wage left hand side, right hand side, we got a control variable. Why we, first of all, why we got the endogenous problem? For example, the, the omitted variable in our, why we get, the reason why we got, uh, Endogenous problem is uh, because uh, the error term probably contains something like uh, the worker is, uh, say, for example, smart or not, has uh, ability high or not, so on and so forth, right? For example, if you're smart, if your ability is high, so that uh, your, uh, your uh, for, for example, say, uh, education probably will be higher because if you're smart, you can get your master degree, you can get a PhD degree easily, right? So that you can increase your education level very easily, right? So, <laughs> but if you're smart, you know, when you do the same job, and so you can perform better than your college, you know, co-workers, right? So that you got a, you got a raise very easily so that your wage is higher than other workers, right? So that, so that, not only because education calls your wage, but actually it's it's something like your ability or smart or not, they cause your education to be high, also cause your wage to be high, right? That's why we argue why we have endogenous problem right there, right? 
Right here, that's why people argue education. Education is the troublemaker, is the endogenous variable because it's related to your ability, high or low, smart or not, so on and so forth, right? But talking about female and black, this is not a function of uh, your smart or not. It won't be the case of that because I'm a smart so that I'm a female, <laughs> because I'm a smart so that I'm male, right? So that uh, there's no such a relationship out there, right? <laughs> it won't be because I'm uh, my ability is high or low so that I'm black or white, right? So that's why that's why they argue the first two, they are X1, uh, actually Z1 variables. They are nice exogenous variable. But education, they argue it's the bad endogenous variable, right? That's basically the argument. So that way they put it. Similarly, they treat these variables, experience, experience square, occupation, industry, union, to be endogenous, right? You can, you can check out basically these variables. Right to be to be our x two variables right, so basically computer ask for what's your uh what's your bad uh x two z two variables right there right uh basically once you specify what's your x two z two variable computer already know uh, you know everything else will be x one z one variables right <laughs> and so and so let's check out the Hausman Taylor the result there right here. In class, we mentioned is a step by step. Step number one, calculate uh, the D variables, right? Step number two, run the two space bar. But in data, one simple command give us everything, all those results, right? Let's see. The results look four parts. TV exogenous, TV endogenous, TI exogenous, TI endogenous. TV means time variant. TI means time invariant, right? Invariant means doesn't change over time. In other words, the letter two, TI, these are my Z variables. TV, very over time, those are my X variables, right? So is exogenous means the first group. Endogenous means the second group, right? They are my X1, X2, Z1, Z2. Right? How does computer realize uh, this result? Because I've already given computer my endogenous variables right here, right? I let computer know these variables, so they are endogenous. And also these variables, so they are endogenous, right? So that's why computer knows all those combinations, right? So computer give us all those results, give us all those results so that, uh, so that, uh, Compare these results together with, uh, you know, fixed effect random so, so that this Hausman Taylor estimator give us all those uh, solutions. That's why Hausman Taylor solved the problem, right? So, uh, let me repeat the story. So in our case, uh, fixed effect is always correct, but it doesn't give an answer for Z, right? Random effect give us everything, but, you know, Sometimes, you know, sometimes we fail to pass Hausman test, right? In that case, we have to look for another solution. The solution is a Hausman Taylor estimator. What's Hausman Taylor estimator? By, you know, different steps. First step, and so our fixed effect can always give us our beta hat, right? Beta hat is not a problem. With a beta hat, we can calculate y minus beta x, so that we call the di term, right? Once we have di, we can run the regression d over z. But uh, we need to run a two-state square by using instruments, right? What kind of instruments? Our first group of variables, x1 and z1 variables as instruments, right? And so that's the solution Hausman Taylor has proposed. Very, very simple, right? And so probably by by doing the way I describe my situation, and so Z1 instrument for themselves, right? And uh, X2 instrument for uh, Z2 variables, right? So that probably, you know, you already realize we need at least enough X2 variables, uh, sorry, X1 variables so that we can instrument for those uh, bad Z Z1 variables, right? So in other words, we need enough instruments 
we need enough instrument. If you have one indulgent variable, we need one instrument. If you have two, you need two instruments on the first, right? So in other words, in your group, the number of exogenous X, hopefully we have more, right? That's basically the star. So that's the Hausman taylor estimator. And the later on, Hausman taylor estimator has been uh, extended by Amemiya and McCurdy. 1986. So in state, if you prefer, if you want to calculate to the Amemiya and the McCurdy estimator, everything the same, but afterwards specifies option A McCurdy. A McCurdy. A stand for Amemiya, right? <laughs> McCurdy get the full credits, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> state uh, tradition, right? That's why when I write paper with uh, Betty, I always, <laughs> so I'm always a second author, but uh, <laughs> I plan later on command will be something like a B, <laughs> right? I got a full credits. <laughs> and so, but anyway, uh, what's the, uh, compare Amemiya and uh, Amemiya McCurdy, compare with original Hausman Taylor. The, the details we do not require, but they are basically the same. The, the contribution of these uh, Amemiya McCurdy is uh, they further, they further proposed more instruments. And so they decompose those uh, X1, Z1 variables into details. For example, the first year, second year, so they, they use a, uh, every single year separated them as instruments. The general idea is very similar, but they simply propose let's use our instruments in, in a better way so that hopefully we are more efficient. And that's basically the idea. So from theory, Amemiya McCurdy is supposed to be more efficient than a uh, Hausman taylor estimator. That, that we do not require all those details. As long as you, you know, know the idea, Hausman taylor good enough. And if you want to try Amemiya McCurdy, just uh, use the option within the command xt, uh, xth taylor specify comma a McCurdy, right? <laughs> That's the, uh, any questions uh, so far? Yes, uh, accordingly, you're going to have homework number four. Homework number four is uh, uh, by using a data set gravity.tta. This is a data set in this paper, in this paper, Journal Applied Econometrics paper, and it's a 2007. And so, uh, and so we are asked to run a bunch of regression. Let me talk about one by one. Part A, run all or less regression, trade over GDP similarities and so forth. Let me explain a little bit about this regression. Um, first of all, this is about international trade. And so in international trade, there's a model called gravity model. What does that mean? Uh, in international trade, they try to study trade between countries. They try to figure out between you and me, for example, large country, small country, or maybe large country, large country, small country, small country, right? They try to study in what kind of situation we're going to treat more, what kind of situation we treat less. And it's, it's kind of similar to, you know, in, in physics, they studied the planets, right? A big planets and small planets, the gravity, they, they try to attract each other, right? The impact between each other, large or small, so on and so forth. It's kind of similar in that sense. That's why they call it gravity model. <laughs> so the right-hand side, they, they put a bunch of variable called the GDP, basically rich countries, poor country, or you can call it a big country, small country, right? And... Uh, SIM stands for similar in size. Uh, actually, size means a big country, small country, right? And so GDP means a trade between, you know. And the afterwards, RFL, for example, that's the uh, difference in factor endowment between trading partner. RER, real exchange rate, for example, between US, Canada, right? Or between US and China, China's uh, uh, currency is uh, Yuan, right? Or between China, US and uh, Japan, so on, so on and so forth. And the next one, dummy variable, which is a one between country belong to 
a European community. A dominant variable is one when they choose a, a common currency. The distance between those uh, capital, basically between your and me, are, they, are we close or far away from each other, right? And uh, what else? Common border. Are we neighbors or not, right? And uh, do we speak the same language or not, right? So on and so forth. Basically, right-hand side, all those variables, they try to capture information. Are we similar? <laughs> are we you know, far away from each other? Do we speak the same language? <laughs> so on and so forth, right? And we try to study those information. How do they impact our import out output, our trade between each other? That's, that's basically the idea. So first of all, part A is run the all or less regression. Very simple. It's computer commands must be REG, Y, X1, X2, X3, so on and so forth, right? Simple. Part B, C, D, these are our old stuff. B, C, D, they are our old stuff. Fixed effect, random effect, Hosman test, right? So just to perform them, then probably, uh, I don't remember the conclusion, but probably uh, you cannot pass a Hosman test, right? That's why you need further you know, check out uh, resort to Hausman Taylor estimator, right? <laughs> I don't remember the conclusion, but probably you're gonna you cannot pass Hausman test. Now, part E, do Hausman Taylor estimator. So let's use endogenous variables. Let's treat as uh, these variables, these variables. In other words, uh, talk about the computer codes, uh, X T H Taylor, everything, right? Comma, specify endogenous. We our computer commands right here. Uh, where is it? Uh, the computer codes you have to specify. Uh, what are your endogenous variables, right? And it's co comma endogenous parentheses specify what's your endogenous variables. So in part E, let's use these variables to be our endogenous, right? So that just uh, just put these variables inside of the parentheses, right? Uh, you don't have to specify exogenous because the computer are gonna realize uh, uh, other variables left over, they're, they're gonna be exogenous, right? And uh, so that to run this uh, Hausman taylor estimator, your result, you should be able to, to verify your result should be similar to to the, to the result in table two in their original paper. I have already posted the paper on Canvas so that you can take a look. Suppose be may not be exactly the same, but uh, because and you know a number of digits and so on and so forth. But uh, you should be roughly speaking very similar to their original result. Part F. Part F is uh, in their table. In their table. In the different column, they tried. Uh, they tried a different combination of endogenous variables. So let's use uh, S I M C E E M U L A N. Let's use uh, these variables. In other words, before words, we use uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's use uh, six of them to be endogenous, right? And in part F, we only treat four of them to be endogenous. Let's try different uh, combination to see the result robust or not robust, right? So on so forth. So that our point is we are not trying to argue which one is endogenous, which one is endogenous. We just try to replicate their results, right? So that uh, their original paper is on is on canvas so that uh, you guys uh, try and, uh, you know, try to replicate their result so that you can compare. So, Homework number three will be due, of course, at the first. And homework number four will be due the week afterwards, right? So, so that you, you know, do one by one. Uh, today we've already, we've already finished. Uh, let me show you the syllabus. Uh, by the way, I update uh, the 